Sabbath, everybody. So, gesegneten Sabbat allerseits. Let us open with a prayer. Lasst uns mit Gebet beginnen. Dear Father in heaven. Lieber Vater im Himmel. Lord, you brought us safely through another week. Herr, du hast uns sicher durch eine weitere Woche gebracht. And we thank you for this uh, day of rest and gladness. Und wir danken dir für diese Tag der Ruhe und des ähm, äh, ja, Freude. Freude. Danke. And we ask, Lord, that you would please now um, would, you would bless your word. Und wir bitten jetzt, Herr, dass du dein Wort segnen mögest. That you would help us to get rid of all the earthly and worldly thoughts. Dass du uns helfen mögest, alle weltliche und irdische Gedanken loszuwerden. And that we can now only focus upon heavenly things and upon your word. Und dass wir jetzt nur auf himmlische Sachen und dein Wort fokussieren können. And that we can learn of you. Und dass wir von dich, von dir lernen können. Help each one of us to sit now at the feet of Jesus. Hilft ein jeder von uns jetzt zu Fußen Jesu zu sitzen. And to receive the word that has the power to uh, make us born again. Und das Wort zu erhalten, die den Kraft hat, uns neu geboren zu machen. Please open us this book of Revelation. Bitte öffne zu uns diese Buch der Offenbarung. That Christ might pass before us. Dass Christus an uns vorüberziehe. And that we would behold His glory. Und dass wir seine Herrlichkeit sehen mögen. And we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Und wir bitten und beten in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I posted the notes in the live stream group. So ich habe Notizen in der live stream group gepostet. And this evening we want to begin looking at the chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. Und heute Abend wollen wir anfangen das 21. Kapitel des Buches Offenbarung zu anschauen. And yeah, so far we already covered 20 chapters. Und soweit, wir haben bereits 20 Kapitel abgedeckt. Und zwei sind left. Okay. Es gibt zwei noch übrig. So, but obviously, the studies we have done so far in the book of Revelation is basically just an introduction in some sense. Okay. Natürlich, die Studien, die wir bereits auf das Buch der Offenbarung gemacht haben, sind in gewissen Sinne nur eine Einführung. Because once you really dig into it, you can probably study it for a whole year. And not, I mean, you can study it for eternity, right? Also, wenn wir wahrlich da reingreifen würden, also wir wissen, dass wir den Bibel ins Ewigkeit studieren können. Okay. Good. So, now let's go to chapter 21. So, gehen wir zu Kapitel 21. And we want to look at a few things here. Let's begin in verse 1. Fangen wir in Vers 1 an. Because chapter 20 ended with, maybe we can just go briefly to chapter 20 also, just to remind ourselves. In chapter 20 we saw that Satan, he gets bound for a thousand years. The saints will then sit in judgment. After the thousand years, Satan comes up with all the wicked, right, Gog and Magog. Nach den tausend Jahren kommt Satan herauf mit den ganzen Bösen, nämlich Gog und Magog. And fire comes down from heaven and devours them. Und Feuer kommt von Himmel herab und verzehrt sie. And then it says here, in the last verse of the chapter in verse 15. In Vers 15 des letzten Vers des Kapitels ist sagt. It says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Right? So, this is how chapter 20 closes. So. So ended sich Kapitel 20. With the second death. Okay. Das zweite Tod. So in chapter 21 just continues this thought. Und Kapitel 21 setzt diese Gedanke fort. Because when everybody, uh, when every wicked is devoured, what will the Lord do then? Denn wenn jeder von den Bösen verzehrt worden ist, was wird der Herr dann tun? Yeah, we'll create a new heaven and a new earth. Er wird eine neue Himmel und neue Erde schaffen. So this is uh, what we can now find in verse 1. Das ist, was wir in Vers 1 jetzt finden können. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So, keep your finger here. Halte den Platz hier. So, he sees the new heaven, new earth. Er sieht den neuen Himmel und neue Erde. Let's go to 2 
Peter Chapter 3. Gehen wir zu 2. Petrus Kapitel 3. Das ist not in the notes. Das ist nicht in deinen Notizen. Let's begin with verse 8. Wir fangen mit Vers 8 an. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Alright? So, that speaks about these thousand years of peace. Yes? Das spricht über diese tausend Jahre des Friedens. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to, the, to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So this fulfills at the second coming, but also at the third coming, right? Vers 10, also dies erfüllt sich bei seinem zweiten Kommen, aber auch beim dritten. So and at the third coming, Literally everything will be burnt up. Yes? Bei dem dritten Kommen alles wird buchstäblich aufgebrannt werden. Vers 11. Vers 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person, of persons ought ye to be in all holy convocation, con, sorry, conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. So, what happens with the heavens? Was geschieht mit den Himmel? Mm -hmm. Will be dissolved and all the elements will melt. Right? Aufgelöst und alle Elementen werden schmelzen. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, when dwelleth righteousness. Okay, so he says when everything is burnt up. What will come? So, like, when alles aufgebrannt wird, what, what will come? New heavens and new earth. New right? Himmel und neue Erden. So, and this is what is written here in Revelation 21. This is auch was hier in Offenbarung 21 geschrieben ist. So, in verse 1, Vers 1. let's read it again. Lesen wir noch mal. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So, why is there no more sea? So, warum gibt es kein Meer mehr? No more trouble. Yeah, no time of trouble anymore. So yes. Keine Zeit des Trübsals mehr. Okay, so the beasts in the Sunday law they come out of the water or, or of the sea. Die Tiere im Sonntagsgesetz kommen aus das Wasser empor, aus dem Meer empor. But the lamb-like beast that comes up peacefully is in a comes out of the yeah. earth, right? Der lammähnliche Tier, der friedlich heraufkommt, kommt aus der Erde empor. So it's in a time of peace when it comes up out of the earth. Es ist eine Zeit des Friedens, wo es aus der Erde emporkommt. Okay, good. So, but it says here, new heaven, new earth, for the first heaven and first earth were passed away. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Wir gehen dazu, 2. Korinther 5, Vers 17. Just realized this board is not the best for my presentation. Okay, so <clears throat> and it says there. You like this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So, what is the correlation? So, what is that zusammenhang? Yes, okay. Typify the, the new earth because your hearts began them. Yes. So when your hearts made new, it typifies the time of peace of a thousand years, the new earth. Or a thousand years in one sense, but eternity in the other sense. Mm -hmm. So when dein Herz neu gemacht wird, da schattet ähm, das äh, neue Erde und neue Himmel voraus. Also Zeit des Friedens im Typus und natürlich die Ewigkeit in Erfüllung. Just need to quickly make here some changes. So that's a little time for peace.
spacing is not consistent. No, it's not terrible. You just cut out the last little bit. Which one? Okay, just need it for illustration purposes. Good, so <clears throat> what happens here? So, what's geschieht here? You're born again, right? It's now you're born. Okay, so you become a new creature. Du willst eine neue Kreatur. But this only typifies what? Aber dies schattet nur was vor uns. Yes, okay. So this would illustrate the Earth made new, right? Dies würde der Erde neu gemacht darstellen. So in this sense you have the same illustration, okay? In diesem Sinne hat man dieselbe Darstellung. Okay. Um, and that's what I want to show, it's a parallel illustration, okay? Das ist was ich zeigen möchte, es ist eine Paralleldarstellung. And it says, you're in a new creature, the old things are passed away, behold all things are become new, okay? Es ist eine neue Kreatur. Alte Sachen sind weggegangen und alles ist neu geworden. So let's continue now, let's go back to Revelation 21. Gehen wir zurück zur Offenbarung 21. Verses 2 and 3. Die Versen 2 und 3. It says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Okay, so when he makes the heavens and the earth new, so when the Himmel and Erde neu macht, what comes out of heaven? Was kommt aus dem Himmel? Okay, yes, New Jerusalem. Okay. The New Jerusalem. And a great voice out of heaven. So yes. Eine große Stimme aus dem Himmel her. So. And that would be after the thousand years of peace, yes? Nach der tausend Jahre des Friedens. But once he executes judgment, yes? Nachdem er Gericht ausführt. So, and then you enter into the land, okay? Dann kommst du in das Land hinein. Yes? Okay. Good. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Gehen wir jetzt zu Offenbarung 12. Verse 10. Vers 10. Looking at this voice coming out of heaven. Schauen wir diese Stimme, die aus dem Himmel herauskommt. Revelation 12, verse 10. It says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So where is Satan cast out? So, wo is Satan hinausgeworfen? Yes, okay. So, at the final review, yes? Bei der finale Untersuchung. So, Satan gets cast out, you have a great voice. Satan wird hinausgeworfen, hier gibt es diese große Stimme. Alright. And, um, and this would be then a parallel to the earth being made new, yes? Und dies wäre eine Parallel zu der Erde, die neu gemacht wird. Okay. So, <coughs> Now therefore we can see here you have a great voice and then literally after a thousand years you also have a great voice. Okay? Hier können wir sehen, es gibt eine große Stimme und dann buchstäblich nach den tausend Jahren gibt es auch eine große Stimme. And it's both times signifies that when Christ begins to rule. Okay? Und in beiden Fällen ist, zeigt den Punkt an, wo Christus fängt an zu regieren. Okay, actually, when I just would make it more... Place it because this is Revelation 12. Yeah, let's go in our Bibles to Revelation 12. This is Offenbarung 12. Gehen wir in unseren Bibeln dahin. Because where's verse 10 actually marked on the line? Markieren wir Vers 10 auf der Linie. A close of probation, yes? So that it would be here. Okay? But this the principle of it would be also here. Okay. So we have a great voice. Okay. Um, so let's go to Revelation 11. And then verse 15. Vers 15. 
It says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So, where do we mark this? So, wo markieren wir das? Also at the close of the Amen. Because it says, then the nations were angry and die, wrath is coming. Yes? Die Nationen waren zornig und dein Zorn ist gekommen. Okay, so here, what comes out of heaven? So here, was kommt aus dem Himmel heraus? Great voices. Yeah, great voices, yes. Große Stimmen. So just a second witness for the great voices here. So okay. zweite Stimme für die große Stimme hier. When the Lord executes judgment. When the Herr das Gericht ausführt. And who is to rule? Und wer sollte regieren? Christ. Yes. Yeah. Christus. Kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. So the Father and the Son. Right? Der Vater und Sohn. And, but the same we saw in chapter 12, verse 10. Aber dasselbe haben wir in Kapitel 12, Vers 10 gesehen. Yes. It says, in the kingdom of our God and of the power of his Christ. Yeah, so both. So, der Königreich Gottes und der Kraft seines Christus. Also beide. And now let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Let's read verses 1 and 2. And in the chapter preceding it, in chapter 18, what is described there? Yeah, the judgment on Babylon. Okay, so and then chapter 19 verse 1 says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in Heaven. So what did he hear? Was hörte er? Great voice. Yes. Eine große Saying Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. <coughs> for true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great war, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. So where would we, we mark this? So wo würden wir das markieren? <coughs> Yeah, this would be then here at the end, right? This would be here at the end. The second coming. Sein zweites Kommen. Great voices, right? Große Stimmen. So we can see whenever you come to this point where you execute judgment, it gives the punishment to one, but he gives the reward to the others. Yes? You can see when it comes here to the Ausführung des Gerichtes, it gives the Segen to the one, the Bestrafung to the other. So, and all this typifies when he makes the heaven new, when he punishes the wicked and burns them up and gives the new earth to his people. All die schattet das neue Erde voraus, wenn er den Bösen bestraft und sie verbrennt und das neue Welt sein Volk gibt. Okay, so now let's go. I mean, it says here in Revelation 19, verse 1, he heard a great voice of much people. Okay, so let me just... 19, verse 1, it says, a great voice. Let me just make it connected. Okay. Good. Now let's go back to Revelation 21, and let's read verse 3 one more time. Let's go back to Revelation 21, and let's read verse 3 one more time. And it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Yes? So, when he makes everything new, what happens to God's people? So, when he alles neu macht, what geschieht mit Gottes Volk? They will be his people, yes? And he will be their Und er wird ihr God. God sein. So, Therefore, when does this already apply in principle? So, deswegen, wann ist dies im Prinzip anzuwenden bereits? Yeah, the new birth, okay? Neugeburt. So, when you're born again, God is now your God, okay? Neugeboren wirst, Gott ist jetzt dein Gott. Okay, what must you do in order to become born again? Und was musst du tun, um neugeboren zu werden? Repent. Yes, to okay. Buße. Okay, repent of what? So, to Buße von was? Okay. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 
beginning in verse 14. Because the Lord said, I will be your God and you will be my people. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? So what should you not do? So what should you not do? Yoke yourself together with unbelievers, okay? Mit Ungläubigen zusammen, ja. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So, what must you do in order that God can be your God, and you can be his people? So, was must you do, so that God dein God sein kann, and ihr sein Volk? Separate yourself. Yeah, you must come out of Babylon. Okay? Aus Babylon herauskommen. So, and... This is then illustrated also at the new heaven, new earth, okay? Dies wird auch dargestellt bei den neuen Himmel und neuen Erden. Because when you go now to Revelation chapter 18, wenn wir zu Offenbarung 18 gehen, in your Bibles, Revelation 18, verse 4, Vers 4, Says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So, what must you do? Was and why? Must you tun and warum? Come, Come out of Babylon. Or you will be punished with her. Yeah, or you will receive this lake of fire. Yes? Kommt aus ihr raus oder du wirst diesen Feuersee erhalten. Okay, so therefore. Lord will burn up the wicked, but he will then give the new earth to the saints, right? Okay, and all this is always then typified at all these different waymarks where the Lord executes judgment, okay? Okay, everybody follows so far. Can you so right follow? Now let's go to Revelation chapter 21. <coughs> so the, the question is always, because Moses said, choose you this day, uh, choose life or death, okay? Mose hat gesagt, wählt an diesem Tag, also wählt entweder Leben oder Tod. So what would be life and what would be death? So was wäre denn Leben und was wäre Tod? In this context here. In diesem Zusammenhang. Like a fire on your earth. Yes, okay. So a fire sale oder neue Erde. Or in our time. Oder in unserer Zeit. Would be the new birth. Das wäre. Or this punishment, right, that typifies the legal fight. Diese, es wird in unserer Zeit das Neugeburt oder diese Bestrafung, die das Feuersee vorausschattet. Yes. Okay, so there's only these two options. Yeah? Es gibt nur diese zwei Optionen. Okay, good. <coughs> Now let's go back to Revelation 21, verse 4. Gehen wir zurück zu Offenbarung 21 und Vers 4. It says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So, what is passed away? So, was ist vergangen? The former things. Früheren Sachen. So, jump over Isaiah 25. Überspringen wir Jesaja 25. Let's go to Isaiah 41. Gehen zu Jesaja 41. To look at these former things. Um okay. diese früheren Sachen anzuschauen. So, verse 21 to 23. Vers 21, 23. Some verses we are well familiar with. It says, Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, 
that we may consider them and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods, yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. So the former things is what? So the früheren Sachen sind was? All the types. Alle okay. Typen. So when the types are now passed away, so when the Typen vergangen sind, what therefore started? Was hat denn begonnen? Antitype. Yeah, the antitype. The okay. antitypus. Or, Oder? which covenant? Welches Bundes? New covenant. New covenant. Das neue okay. Bundes. So therefore this new covenant promise is perfectly fulfilled when you receive the birth made new. Right? So, diese neue Bundesverheißung ist perfekt erfüllt, wurde die Erde neu gemacht erhält. Yes. This was the promise given to Abraham. Yes? Das war die Verheißung, die Abraham gegeben wurde. Okay. Was the new covenant promise. Das war der neue Bundesverheißung. This is why it says he was under the new covenant. Yes. White sagt, er war unter den neuen Bund. Okay. So <coughs> Therefore, it shows you know, that whenever we come here to these, these types of this, it's yeah. always illustrated by a new birth. Es durch ein uh, you enter into this new covenant, Gehst in diesen neuen Bund yes. and you then also receive this, this piece of land illustrating the earth made new. Okay. Yes? Amen. Okay. Good. So therefore, you know, whenever you receive it, you receive this foretaste of heaven. So okay. whenever you receive it, you receive a taste of heaven. So let's go to Hebrews chapter six. Yeah, now to Hebrews six. Our Bibles. Our Bible. Unfortunately, oh, I, don't, I don't want to say unfortunately because God always does it perfectly, but uh, here these verses are fearful, okay? So, ich möchte nicht leider sein, sagen, weil Gott macht immer alles vollkommen, aber diese Versen sind fürchterlich. Uh, oder furchtsam. Oder furchtsam. So, let's read verses 4 to 6. Die Versen 4 bis 6. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Okay, so where is it that you have tasted the world to come? Wo ist es, wo die Welt, der noch kommen soll, geschmeckt hast. Same place you can also fall away. Yeah, but it's, it's at the new birth, right? Bei der Neugeburt. Okay, so when you're born again, wenn du neu geboren you're bist, made partaker of the Holy Ghost, it says, right? Du bist Teilnehmer des Heiligen Geistes, sagt es. And you're an enlightened now. Du wirst erleuchtet. Yes, and you have a foretaste of this earth made new. Du okay. hast ein Vorgeschmack auf das Erde, die neu gemacht wird. Yeah. And you also, in order to become born again, right, you must see the revelation. Okay. Um neu geboren zu werden, du musst die Offenbarung erhalten. And what will you realize in the revelation? Und in die Offenbarung, was wirst du erkennen? Yeah, true condition. Yes, okay, yes, but uh, with, in harmony with verse 6. Um, Zustand aber in Zusammenhang mit Vers 6 hier. Because it says, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh. In the Revelation, what will you see about in the Offenbarung, was wirst du sehen? Crucified. that you crucified Christ? Okay. Dass du Christus gekreuzigt hast. So there you crucify him. Okay. Da kreuzigst du ihn. And you must repent of it immediately. Und du musst sofort davon Buße tun. So, but if you then, after this experience, you willfully sin again. Aber wenn du nach dieser Erfahrung willentlich sündigst, you will crucify him again. Okay. Du wirst ihn erneut kreuzigen. I mean, it's possible after this the first birth to, to sin again, but not you not willfully, okay? Es ist möglich nach dem ersten Geburt zu sündigen, aber nicht willentlich. Not on the so when you come to the second birth, in there you fall away. It's impossible to be renewed because that's the only opportunity for you. If if you lose 
if you, after the first pass, if you lose that, you come to that, that bit at the end. That's your only opportunity. If you fall away there, it's impossible to be saved. Bei den Zweitgebot, wenn du zum Zweitgebot ankommst, is willful sin. Und du da wegfällst, no, dann fällst du weg. Du kannst ignorant sein. Ja, yeah, okay, ich bin nicht über das. Ich bin nicht über das. Wenn du schon ein Taste von Dingen bekommst, dann bist du nicht ignorant sein. Nein, du kannst nicht. Es ist nicht ignorant sein. Ja, aber du kannst. Ich meine, du kannst. Zum Beispiel Charles Fitch, right? He, he, he was not keeping the seven. He was not in a fallen condition, right? He was it's completely different. All these people that he says return unto me are willfully sinning. They're not ignorantly sinning, right? So that, that you can't use that to say that after you've had the first birth, if you willful sin, that's it, you're done. It's complete nonsense. All those people that Jeremiah was rebuking, saying that a four horse forehead had willfully sinned after they tasted you know, the, the, what was to come. And he was pleading with them to return. It's in the, in the time period at the end, if you fall away there, that's it, it's done. There's no more opportunity for you ever again to be saved. Everybody who's just read through all the stories, everybody's been rebuked, they're willfully sinning. They're constantly being told they're in sin, but they refuse to return. Not ignorant. I mean, they, they are deceived, right? Doesn't matter. They're still willfully sinning. It's yeah, but big. but not in the sense they're not sinning. Well, Lawrence, they knew that they crucified Christ. It's not it's not ignorance at all. There's no excuse for anything that they're doing. Yeah, I mean, those that knowingly crucified him, they closed their probation. It, it says. Matter. I'm not going to argue with you. That's not what you're saying. It is right. That's complete nonsense. If you if you sin after that time, you can fall away and you can regain yourself. That's what the whole Bible is showing. Yes, right? but it depends on how you fall away. Listen, I don't care. I'm not going to argue with you. That's not what you're saying. That's saying it. Right? You, that's just your own interpretation of it. But that's not what it means. I mean, it says here in Hebrews 10, right? Verse 26. <laughs> it says. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice yes, for sins. It's talking about when the exceeding bright light comes. That's when it comes. That's your last chance. You sin willfully there, you're done. It's, it's yeah, talking I mean, about the first part. It's talking about you, the Lord will save you right to the very last minute. And if you return to him at the last minute, you'll be saved. But at the last minute, when that light comes, if you reject it, you're done. That's what it's talking about. If we sin willfully after the exceeding bright light comes. If you just go, just look, if you just go to Jeremiah chapter 4, it says, return unto me. You, that was the, it says, you have a hoarse forehead that refuses to be ashamed. How do you refuse to be ashamed if you're sinning ignorantly? It's not ignorant sin there. No, willfully I mean... rebelling against God. I mean, I think it, it, there's a difference between being deceived and sinning against God or being undeceived and sinning against God. Lord, you're getting yourself and you're digging a, digging a bigger hole for yourself. That's not what you're saying it is. I think you should just leave this point. Okay, Let, let's leave it for now and we can look at this later time. Okay, but anyways, the point is that uh, when you come to the birth, it says in Hebrews 6, you're made a partaker of the Holy Ghost and you have a foretaste of what is to come. Yes. Okay. So, therefore, always these things are in a small measure or when you go down in a greater measure fulfilled up to the perfect fulfillment after the thousand years. Okay. All these things are in a small measure in a growing mass until the fulfillment of the thousand years after the thousand years. Okay, now let's go back to Revelation 21. So, let's go back to Revelation 21. And then verse 5. And then verse 5. Ja, 
It says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Okay, so <clears throat> he's saying, I make all things new. Yes? Er sagt, ich mache alles neu. And then verse 6. Vers 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So, we have here, it is done. So, we yes. have here, es ist getan. And he that overcometh shall what, do what? And derjenige, der überwindet wird, was sein? Inherit all things. Alles erben. So what is he there for? So was ist er dann? It's an heir. Yes? And he is also what? Und er ist auch was? A son. Ein right? Sohn. Okay, so what therefore comes to your mind? So was kommt in der Sinne? Yeah, Galatians 4. Yes? So let's go first to Romans 8 and then we go to Galatians 4. Gehen wir zuerst zu Römer 8, danach werden wir zu Galater 4 gehen. Uh, Romans 8, verses 14 to 17. Römer 8, Vers 14 bis 17. And this speaks now about the Romans 8 man. Und hier yeah? über den Römer 8 Mensch. And the Romans 8 man is what man? Der Römer 8 Mensch ist was für ein Mensch? Yeah, the one who received the new birth. Okay? So, einer, der den Neugeburt erhalten hat. So, in verse 14 it says, Vers 14 sagt es, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For, if, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So here we can see, yes, an heir. Yes. So here we see you are an heir. When you are led by the Spirit of God. When you from God's God is geführt wirst. And you cry, Abba, Father. And you cry, Abba, Father. And you are also a son. It says in verse fourteen. Yes. Fourteen. Say, you are also a son. So now Galatians four, verse six and seven. Galatians four, verse six and seven. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So, same illustration, yes? Same illustration. So therefore, whenever you come to the end of the Galatians 4 experience, and you enter into the Romans 8 experience, it's all a foretaste of what will be perfectly fulfilled at the end of the thousand years. Ist alles ein Vorgeschmack auf dessen, was am Ende der tausend Jahre erfüllt wird. Because then you will be an heir for all eternity. You will inherit how many, how many things? Dann wirst du eine Erbe für alle Ewigkeit und du wirst wie viele Sachen erben? All his goods. The whole, all, the whole universe, okay? Die gesamte Universum. Because you will be joint heir with Christ, it says. Du wirst mit Erbe mit Christus werden. And we, we, we study this. Christ is which king? Or what kind of king? Du dir, was ist Christus für ein König? King of Kings. King of Kings. König yes. von Königen. We saw the whole universe, all the unformed worlds. They are, they are kings, right? Wir haben gesehen, die ganze Universum, die ganzen ungefallenen Welten sind Könige. Yeah, but Christ is the the King of Kings, the what's the Kaiser. Emperor. Emperor. Aber Christus ist der König der Könige, der Kaiser allen. Yes. So typified by when you're set over the nations here, it's an illustration of how you will be set over the whole universe. Then. Ausgeschattet hier, wenn du über die Nationen gestellt wird, ist eine Darstellung von wie du über die ganzen Welten dann gestellt wirst. Okay. So it's really amazing. And therefore, whenever you come to these points, you can already then look forward by faith what is awaiting you. You have a little bit better imagination of what is to come. Okay. Es ist erstaunenswert, wenn du immer zu diesen Punkten ankommst, dann hast du ein bisschen Vorgeschmack auf dessen, was dich dann später erwartet. This will always keep you going, uh, step by step. Das wird dich immer ähm, stärken, Schritt für Schritt voranzugehen. Until you finally reached it. Bis du letztendlich es erreichst. 
Gut. Now let's go back to Revelation 21 and now verse 8. Gehen wir zurück zu Offenbarung 21 und Vers 8. It says, so there, there's one class that will inherit all things and will become the son. So gibt es eine Klasse, die alles erben werden und Söhne werden. That's the one that received the blessing. Okay. Derjenige, der den Segen erhalten hat. But now in verse 8, it's the group that receives the curse. Aber hier in Vers 8 spricht über die Gruppe, die den Fluch erhalten. Also, always two classes, right? Blessings and curses. Immer okay. zwei Klassen, Segen und Fluch. So verse 8, it says, Vers 8 sagt, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with, a, with fire and brimstone, which is the second, second death. Yes? Okay. So he has listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different characteristics of the wicked. So here sind acht verschiedene Charaktermerkmalen des Bösen da gelistet. And I just want to look at uh, some of them. Okay. Ich möchte nur einige davon anschauen. So the first characteristic is the fearful. So okay. Die erste ist den fürchtsame. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 8. Gehen wir zu 5. Mose 20 vers 8. It says, And the officers shall speak further unto the people, when they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren, brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. So this was the law that when they went out to battle, everybody who was scared could go home. So, so, dies war das Gesetz, wenn sie zum Kampf ausgezogen sind, diejenigen, die fürchterlich waren, konnten nach Hause gehen. Oder ängstlich waren, ja. Ängstlich waren. So, let's go now to Hebrews chapter 10. Gehen wir jetzt zu Hebräer no 10 virus. in unserer Bibel. It says, whosoever was fearful and faint-hearted. Yes. So, wer auch immer ängstlich war und schwachen Herzens war. Das ist irgendwas. Gideon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, Gideon's story. Die Geschichte von Gideon. He gave them the choice to, to go back. Er right? hat sie auch den Wahl gegeben, zurückzugehen. And many went back. Und viele gingen auch zurück. That illustrated what? Und das stellte was da? Falling away. Yes, falling away, separation. Okay. Eine große Wegfallen. So therefore, Wegfallen. when you are fearful, not able to stand in the battle, means you fall away. So okay. Wenn du ängstlich bist und nicht imstande bist, im Kampf zu stehen, das heißt du fällst weg. Because it says in Hebrews 10, verse 38 to 39. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So when you're fearful and draw back, who are you? Wenn du ängstlich bist und ziehst zurück, wer bist du? Son of perdition. Uh, yes, you're son of perdition, right? You're somebody who's not believing to the saving of the soul. Ein Sohn des Verderbens. Du bist jemand, der nicht glaubt auf die Errettung deiner Seele. So, let's confirm this. Let's go to Matthew 8, 26. So, bestätigen wir dies, indem dass wir jetzt zu Matthäus 8, Vers 26 gehen. Matthew 8, 26. Matthäus 8, 26. This is, this, is, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Jesus spricht zu seinen Jungen hier. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So when are you fearful? So when bist du um, ängstlich? And when you have little faith, okay? Wenn du, uh, wenig Glauben hast. So therefore, when you are fearful, you will end up in the lake of fire because you don't really have faith. Okay? That's why the fearful, they don't have the perfect love 
Und deswegen sind sie ängstlich, weil sie nicht den perfekten Liebe im Herzen haben. So, wenn du äh, ängstlich bist, ein Zeichen, dass du unbekehrt bist. Diesen Fürcht des Todes noch in dir. Das werden wir auch sehen. But now it's because when you go now to Isaiah 51. So when we get to Isaiah 51, okay. Because what keeps you in bondage according to Hebrews 2? Then what holds you in the knechtschaft, according to Hebrews 2? Yeah, the fear of death. Okay. The fear of death from the dead. The fear of death is also the fear of man, as we will see. Okay. And the dead is fear is also the fear for the man, as we will see. So Isaiah 51 verses 12 to 13. Isaiah 51 verses 12 and 13. It says, "I, even I, am He that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass?" So. Of whom are you afraid? Vers 12. Von wem bist du ängstlich? Of man, right? Menschen. Man that will die like you will die. Okay. Der Mensch, der genauso sterben wird, wie du sterben wirst. Vers 13. Vers 13. And forgettest the Lord thy maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and hast feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? <coughs> so what were you fearful of? So from what was you anxious? Of the oppressor. The okay. Which is the state power. Right? The state power is. Okay. So you feared man over and above God. So you had the man feared over God. And in Matthew 10. And in Matthew 10. Verse 28. Verse 28. Matthew 10, 28. Verse 10, 28. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Who would this be? So, über wen spricht das hier? Also the civil powers, Auch right? Den Zivilmächten. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and and body in hell. Who's this? Yeah. God, right? Okay, so same illustration. So if you therefore come face to face face to face with a state power. So selbe Darstellung, so wenn du vor dem Angesicht des Staatsmachts kommst. You're facing death in this sense, okay? In diesem Sinne stehst du vor dem Tod. And then it will be obvious whether you are fearful. And will draw back unto perdition. Then it is obviously if you are anxious and you turn back to your damnation. Or whether you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or if you believe to the saving of your soul. Or can be fearful, okay? Vers 17 Without ist being unrighteous in this sense. Okay. Einzige Mal, wo du ängstlich sein kannst, ohne ungerecht zu sein in dem Sinne. And because it says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Okay, so this fear will everybody have when you see Christ. So, diese Furcht wird jeder haben, wenn du Christus siehst. Yeah. But when you humble yourself, he will say to you, "Fear not." When you are humble, then he will tell you, "Fear not." So in this sense, this fear is actually a righteous fear, which will lead you to salvation. Okay. In this sense, this fear is a righteous fear that will lead you to salvation. So this, this are obviously not the ones that will end up in the lake of fire. Okay. And naturally, these people here are not the ones that will end up in the lake of fire. Okay. 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 Um, now let's go also to Malachi chapter 3. So Malachi chapter 3. Verse 3. In Malachi chapter 3, uh, you have uh, in the first four verses, what is it speaking about? Malachi 3, the first four verses, what does it speak about? The Lord comes suddenly to his temple, yes? The Lord comes suddenly to his temple. To purge and purify you. 
um zu reinigen und Leute. So which kind of judgment is this? So was für ein Gericht ist das? That's investigative judgment. Yes? Untersuchungsgericht. But then in verse 5, Aber dann im Vers 5, let's read it. Lass uns das lesen. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. So, <clears throat> what judgment is this? So, which gericht is this? That's the executive, right? This is, would be an, a parallel to the lake of fire. This yes? would be a parallel to the fire. See, and here it says he punishes the sorcerers, the adulterers, the false swearers, and the oppressors. Yes? And here he says that the ja, den Hexen, den Ehebrechern, den Falschschwörern und so weiter ähm, und, und, Oppressors, ja. und die Unterdrücker. Okay, so and this is what we also read in Revelation 21, verse 8. Das ist, was wir auch in Offenbarung 21, Vers 8 gelesen haben. Also the sorcerers were mentioned. Da die Hexen wurden auch erwähnt. And the whoremongers. Und die ähm, Ehebrechern oder Hörereien. And yes, Betreibern. those kind of people. Und solche Menschen. Okay, and we also read those that do or are abominable. Yes. Und auch wir haben auch gelesen diejenigen die ja abtrünnig sind oder Gräueltaten verüben oder Gräueltaten verüben oder gräulich sind. Yeah. And where do we read about the abominations? Und wo lesen wir über den Gräuel? Ezekiel 8. Yes. Ezekiel 8. And the judgment on Those that work abominations is in Ezekiel chapter 9. Yes? Das Gericht auf diejenigen, die Gräueltaten verüben, ist in Ezekiel 9. Okay, so let's go to Ezekiel 9. So, gehen wir da, Ezekiel 9. Das ist 4 to 6. Die Versen 4 bis 6. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man that sigh and that cry, for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay, so this class, they're not the abominable because they repent of it. Right? Diese Klasse sind nicht den Gräulichen, weil sie Buße tun. I mean, they have abominations in their own heart, but they confess them and meine, repent of them. Yes? Sie haben Gräueltaten in ihrem eigenen Herzen, aber sie bekennen sie und tun Buße. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have he pity, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient man which were before the house. Okay. <clears throat> Who else was in the lake of fire? So, where noch war im Feuersee? All the idolaters, yes? So, alle Götzendiener. So, let's go to the idolaters. Gehen wir dahin, zu diesen Götzendienern. Let's read this next quote. Lesen wir diesen Zitat. Also a familiar quote. So, auch ein bekannten Zitat. In rejecting the truth, man reject its author. In trampling upon the law of God, they deny the authority of the lawgiver. It is as easy to make an idol of false doctrines and theories as to fashion an idol of wood or stone. So what is an idol? So what is an idol? False doctrine and theories. Yes. Falsche Lehren und Theorien. By misrepresenting the attributes of God, Satan leads man to conceive of him in a false character. With many a philosophical idol is enthroned in the place of Jehovah, while the living God, as he is revealed in his word, in Christ and in the works of creation, is worshipped but by... You. So what kind of God is sitting upon the throne? So was für ein Gott sitzt auf dem Thron? In many people's hearts. In viele Menschen Herzen. Philosophical. Yes, yeah, so a philosophical. So ein philosophisches. Idol, right? Ein Götze. So they call him this idol Christ. Yes. Sie nennen diese Götze Christus. But it's the Christ of their own making. Aber okay. es ist ein Christus ihren eigenen Schmiedens. Where do we see that they worship a Christ of their own making? Und wo können wir sehen, dass sie einen Christus von ihrem eigenen Schmiedens ähm, anbeten? 
Matthew 7. Okay. Matthew 7. Let's go to Matthew 7. Gehen wir dahin. Also Matthew 25. Okay. Auch in Matthäus 5. Also in Luke 13. In Luke 13. But let's go to Matthew 7. Aber wir gehen zu Matthäus 7. Verse 21. Says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So what do they call him? So was nennen sie ihn? Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Herr, okay. Herr. So they profess to worship Christ. So okay. Sie behaupten, Christus anzubeten. 22. Vers 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Okay, so. Vers 23. Therefore, did they do it in the name of the true Christ? So, haben sie das im Namen des wahren Christus getan? No, they did it in the name of Christ, but. It was in reality a philosophical idol. Okay. Sie haben das zwar im Namen von Christus getan, aber es war eine philosophische Götze für sie. So they made up their own Christ and said, okay, in the name of my Christ, uh, of my understanding of Christ, I cast out no devils. Okay. Sie haben ihren eigenen Christus geschmiedet und dann haben gesagt, in den Namen von meinem Christus, die ich geschmieden habe, werfe ich Teufel hinaus. Yeah. Obviously, they, they, they didn't think they were deceived, but they were. Okay. Natürlich haben sie nicht gedacht, dass sie verführt waren, waren es aber. Okay, let's go back to the quote. Zu dem Zitat zurück. So, thousands deify nature while they deny the God of nature. Though in a different form, idolatry exists in the Christian world today as rarely as it existed among ancient Israel in the days of Elijah. The God of many professedly wise men, of philosophers, poets, political, uh, politicians, journalists, the God of polished fashionable circles, of many colleges and universities, even of some theological institutions, is little better than Baal, the sun god of Phoenicia. Good. <clears throat> now let's go to Colossians chapter 3. It's Colossa 3. Let's see what also is idolatry. Schauen wir weiter, was weiter Götzendienst ist. Chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Yes? So all these things are idolatry. All these things here are God's things. And then it says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So what will come upon you? So what will come over you? The lake of fire, right? Das fire sea. Because all idolaters will be in the lake of Denn allen fire. Yes? Im fire sea sein. And the seven last place is just an illustration of this lake of fire. Okay. okay. So we can basically go through, uh, you can also go through these things in your own time and you can test yourself uh, am I guilty of these things and these things and these things okay Lass diese Sachen durchgehen im eigenen Zeit und dich danach messen ob du nun schuldig von dies oder jenes oder allen sind and at the moment I think we are all guilty of all bonds okay im Moment ich glaube wir sind alle schuldig von allen uh, but we need to obviously then seek this repentance yes Aber wir müssen diese Buße suchen now, Ephesians chapter 5. It's because we read also about the whoremongers. Wir haben auch über den Hurentreibern. Ehebrecher oder Hurer. So, Ephesians 5, verses 1 to 5. So, Ephesians 5, verses 1 to 5. And I remember I was sitting there in the train when I did these notes. Okay. Ich erinnere mich, ich bin im Zug, als ich meine Notizen hier gemacht habe. Mm. Somebody is sitting next to me and I search for these words and so jemand hat neben mir gesessen und ich habe nach all diesen Worten einen Watch-Such gemacht. Just realized, you know, I'm 
the Bible, how it uses this strong language. Okay. Ich habe gerade festgestellt, wie die Bibel diese starke Ausdrucksweise benutzt. Oh, I was thinking, what is this person thinking? Ich habe gedacht, was denkt diesen Menschen neben mir? Okay, so verse 1. So, says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Okay? So if we are guilty of any of these things, we are not in the kingdom. Okay? So wenn wir schuldig von welche von diesen Sachen sind, dann sind wir nicht in den Königreich. Unless we es sei denn, dass wir repent of these things. Okay. So, and the only way we truly can repent is by seeing the revelation. Okay. Der einzige Weg, wie wir wahrlich Buße tun können, ist in dem, dass wir die Offenbarung sehen. But we only see, will see the revelation. Aber wir werden die Offenbarung nur sehen. If we now call upon God and seek Him and ask Him to prepare us for this revelation. Yes? Wir werden Gott aufrufen und ihm suchen und bitten, dass er uns auf diese Offenbarung vorbereiten mag. And by God's grace, I will make a presentation also on, on this very topic about this preparation for the revelation. Und so Gott möchte, ich werde ein Thema über diese um, Vorbereitung auf die Offenbarung hin auch tun. Good. So we saw, we looked at you know, the what was the first, uh, the, the fearful? So we have first this angstliche angeschaut. Those that work abominations. So die, 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 die Gräueltaten verüben. The idolaters. So Götzendienern. The whoremongers. So the Hören. And now. Treibern. Yes. Now the liars. And now the Lügner. So Jeremiah 50. So Jeremiah 50. Verse 35 to 36. So 35 36. It says, A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. Okay, so the liars here, in, at least in this context, are associated with with Babylon. Okay. Den Lügnern, zumindest hier in diesem Zusammenhang, sind in Verbindung mit Babylon. And what will come upon them? Und was wird über sie kommen? A sword. Ein Schwert. Yes. Now Psalm 116, verse 11. Psalm 116, Vers 11. In the notes it's directly joined unto it. I forgot. It says, I said in my haste, I said in my haste, all men are liars. Yes? How many men? Wie viele Menschen? All men. Yes. Alle. So, and therefore, you know, we studied this already. What are we also? Wir haben das studiert. Was sind wir yeah. auch? Beasts, right? Wir sind Tiere. As long as we have the face of a man, we're not part of God's kingdom. So, lange es, dass wir den Gesicht eines Menschen haben, wir sind nicht Teil von Gottes Königreich. And we need to obtain a face of an angel. Wir müssen ein Gesicht von einem Engel ähm, äh, Werben. Yes. Okay. Because all men are liars, and therefore all men will end up where? Alle Menschen sind Lügnern, und deswegen alle Menschen werden wo? In the lake of fire. Landen in das Feuersee. Let's go in our Bibles to Romans chapter eight. Uh, not not eight. Uh, Romans three. Sorry. Bibeln zu Römer Kapitel drei. I mean, here Paul, he quotes what we read from Psalms. So here, zitiert Paulus das, was wir in den Psalmen gelesen haben. And then he describes how we are as men. Okay. Und beschreibt er, wie wir als Menschen sind. So let's first read verse four. So lesen wir zuerst Vers vier. It says, "God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, 
as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. It says, What then? Are we better than they? So you ask the question, are we as Adventists better than the Gentiles? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews or Adventists and Gentiles that they are all under sin. And as, is, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth, there's none that seeketh after God. They are all gone, gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So that's the reason uh, that if you stay a man, you will end up in the lake of fire. Okay. Because this is man. Yeah. Just like beasts. Yes. We need to become these gods with a little g. Okay. So now let's go to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. So Sprüche 30, verse 5 and 6. We come to the last verses here. Yeah. Because we read, all men are liars. Okay. So Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 and 6. Why? Yeah, that's why you are a liar. Yes. It says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Okay, so why are we all liars? Warum sind wir alle Lügner? Because we all pervert his word. Or we, or we have done. And we probably still do ignorantly. But if we don't, once you're reproved of that, if you don't turn from it, it, it sticks to you. You know, it's like yes. you're guilty of it. Okay, so whenever you pervert God's word, you're a liar. Okay. You're either an ignorant liar because you simply don't realize that you do it. Okay. Or you're a willful liar. You know, the Lord reproved you and you keep hold to the error. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Either this way or that way, you are a liar. Okay. Okay. And this is what the Lord wants to cure us from. Yeah. That's why we need to know the truth. Yeah. So the truth will make you free. So now let's go to John 8. Verse 43 to 45. Christ is speaking to the Pharisees. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of the, your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, he believed me not. So who is the arch liar? So where is the Ur Lügner? The father of No, the father of lies. The father der Lügen. Satan. Right? Satan. So as long as you are adding to God's word, you're still of the devil. Okay? So lange dass du zu Gottes Wort hinzufügst, bist du immer noch des Teufels. So that's just another proof you know, that we are not yet children of God. Okay. We first need to see the revelation that 
pure truth. Also wir müssen erst die Offenbarung sehen, also das reine Wahrheit sehen. And then you're a child of God. Okay, Und dann you wirst du ein Kind Gottes, wenn du es annimmst. So, now first John chapter 2. 1. Johannes Kapitel 2. Vers 3 to 4. Vers 3 und 4. It says, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so if you pr profess that you already are born again, but you don't keep his commandments, you are a liar. Also, wenn du behauptest, neu geboren zu sein, aber seine Gebote nicht hältst, bist du ein Lügner. Just proves that you're still a man. Das okay. beweist, dass du immer noch nur ein Mensch bist. So, now first John chapter 2. 1. Johannes 2. Vers 21 und 22. Das ist die Vers 21, 22. I have not written unto you, because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. So when are you also a liar? When auch bist du ein Lügner? You treat Christ in the flesh. Yeah, when you... Those messengers that have the new birth, right, filled with the Holy Ghost. Die Botschaftern, die den Neugeburt gehabt haben und voll des Heiligen Geistes sind. Yeah, they represent now Christ in the flesh. Sie yes? stellen jetzt Christus in Fleisch da. And when you reject their message... Und wenn du ihren Botschaft ablehnst... It says you're a liar. Okay. Es sagt, du bist ein Lügner. Yeah, you just remain a man. Du okay. bleibst ein Mensch. And therefore, what is only left for you? Und was bleibt denn nur für dich übrig? The lake of fire. Das okay. Feuer sieht. So there's only this one message, this one way to heaven. Okay. Es gibt nur diese eine Botschaft, diesen einen Weg zur Himmel. And every other other way is just a lie and will end up in the lake of fire. Und jeder andere Weg ist nur eine Lüge und wird ins Feuersee enden. No. I mean, it, it says you're going to hate every false way. So, es sagt, du sollst jeder falschen Weg hassen. Du kannst das nur mit einem neuen Herzen tun. So, letztendlich, wenn du keinen neuen Herzen hast, bist du ein Lügner. Because you still add to God's word, right? Du fügst immer noch Gottes Wort zu. And you don't keep his commandments. Okay. Seine Gebote nicht. So, now let's go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 to 21. 1. Johannes 4. Verse 20, 21. Now the last verses. Letzten Vers. It says, if any, uh, sorry, if a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Okay. So, therefore, if you say you love God, so deswegen, wenn du sagst, dass du Gott liebst, yeah, but you hate your brother, you will be in the lake of fire. Hass okay. gegen deinen Bruder hast, willst du ins Feuer sehen. That's the only conclusion that the Bible tells you will be there. Okay. Die einzige Schlussfolgerung, die der Bibel uns gibt dafür. So, the Bible is very clear. Okay. Die Bibel ist ja sehr deutlich. When we will end up in the lake of fire and when will we end up in God's kingdom? So, okay. wenn wir ins Feuer sehr enden werden oder wenn wir in Gottes Königreich enden werden. So, we have all these things to, to test ourselves with. So, wir haben alle diese Dinge, womit wir uns selbst prüfen können. And then we can see whose candidate we are at the moment. Okay. Dann können wir sehen, welche Kandidat wir im Moment sind. But at the same time, we also can know that there's still probationary time given us to repent yeah, to seek God. Zugleich wissen wir, dass es immer noch Gnadenzeit gibt, um Buße zu tun und Gott zu suchen. Yes. And we read no man seeketh after God, right? In Romans 3. In Römer 3 haben wir gelesen, kein Mensch sucht nach Gott. Yeah, but you can make a choice, you can say, Lord, I don't my heart is not seeking you, but I come to you now with this request that you help me to seek you. Okay. Aber wir können zu Gott gehen und sagen, Herr, ich weiß, dass mein Herz sucht dich nichts. Aber wir können zu ihm gehen und bitten, dass er uns hilft, ihm zu suchen. Yeah, so whenever the Lord gives us a commandment, so wenn immer der Herr uns einen Befehl gibt, it's at the same time a request for us to come to him to ask him 
for help to perform what he asks of us. Es ist zugleich eine Einladung, dass wir zu ihm gehen und bitten, dass er uns gebe das, was wir benötigen, um ihm zu horchen. Because everything else is just own works and impossible. Alles anders ist nur eigene Werke an Wurzeln. And impossible. Und unmöglich. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so then let's take these thoughts Lasst uns diese Gedanken nehmen. and uh, may we search our hearts during the Sabbath day Mögen wir unsere Herzen während diesen Sabbatstunden forschen. and seek God while he may be found. Suchen, während er noch sich von uns finden wird. Amen. Amen. Okay, then let's close with our prayer. Lasst uns mit unserem Gebet schon beschließen.